Federal government insists on electricity tariff hike as labor threatens shutdown. Telco's fair shutdown as construction of Lagos Calabar Highway threatens cables. Inflation biting hard as Bauchi residents lament hike in petrol prices. And on the foreign scene, military rule Chad votes for president in bloody transition. Hello, welcome to Trust News Update. I am Lilian Ogazi. And now to the news. The federal government on Sunday fought at the organized labor opposition to the electricity tariff hike and the removal of the subsidy in the sector. The spokesperson for the Ministry of Power, Florence A.K., who disclosed this in an interview, said the Minister of Power, Adibayo Adilabu's justification of the electricity tariff hike at the Senate's public hearing on Monday last week was still valid. According to her, the burden of the electricity subsidy was too much for the government to bear and it was not sustainable. AK stated that AK stated this against the backdrop of a two-week ultimatum issued by organized labor demanding the reversal of the increase in the tariff. Meanwhile, the federal government has approved a downward review of electricity tariff for band A customers from 225 naira per kilowatt to 206 kilowatts per hour. A public notice by the Ikeja Electricity stated that the reduction was contained in the May 2024 supplementary order by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. It added that the tariff for bands B, C, D and E remains unchanged. Record that the NARC had in April approved the upward review for band A customers from 68 Naira to 266 Naira, a move it called service reflective price to improve liquidity in the electricity sector. The increase made it mandatory for the electricity distribution companies to ensure customers under the band get at least 20 hours of power supply daily. Away from that, resident of Jalingo Taraba State Capital has called for the connection to Kashimbila Hydro Power Station located in the southern part of the state. They said the current power outage being experienced in Jalingo for over 12 days would have been solved if Jalingo is linked to the Kashimbila Hydro Power Station, which has the capacity to generate 40 megawatts. Ababa Kasani, a Jalingo-based rice miller and businessman, said the current power outage being experienced has exposed the imbalance of power distribution in the state between southern Theraba senatorial zone and central and northern senatorial zones of the state. Now, according to him, the power generated in Kashimbele Hydro Power Station is more than enough for Taraba State and wondered why only one zone is linked to the station, leaving the rest two zones, including Jalingo, the state capital, out. Barely 48 hours after multi-choice alerted subscribers to a three-day technical downtime, telecommunication companies have expressed concerns over possible connectivity disruption as construction advances on the 700km Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. While DSTV and GoTV owner acknowledge the anticipated impact of the ongoing Lagos Calabar construction project on their uplink facilities, Telcos on Sunday expressed broader concerns emphasizing the vital role of telecommunication service and the effect of possible anticipated technical disruption. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway Corridor serves as a crucial landing point for multiple submarine cables connecting Nigeria to Europe. Meanwhile, the Lagos state government has announced its plan to remove over 100 shanties housing several people at Adeniji, Adele, on that bridge from Monday. The Lagos State Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tokumbo Wahab, disclosed this by briefing journalists on Sunday. He said the removal comes after the expiration of a 48-hour removal notice served on all occupants of the shanties to move out their belongings. The commissioner said operatives of the kick against indiscipline and officials from the Ministry Monitoring Enforcement and Compliance Department will be given security backup to conduct the operation. Wahab emphasized that the exercise is part of Babajide Olushola Sanwolu's administration's commitment to reclaim all ungoverned spaces that dot the Lagos landscape. 
Still in Lagos State, the Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Oluyinka Olumide, stated that 80% of buildings in Ibejuleki have no approval. It is closest in the chat with journalists, and according to him, over 80% of estates in Ibejuleki do not have approval. Olumide noted that a layout permit cannot be obtained if it's not zoned for the purpose it was designed for or for the purpose it was being requested. In the same vein, the chief executive officer of Octo 5 Holdings, Jide Odusolu, said Lekki Peninsula Master Plan got distorted post-2010 due to rapid development, with newer estates sidestepping old regulations. Now moving over to Kano, where a fire outbreak has destroyed some sections of the Mundumbawa country home of Kano State former Governor Ibrahim Shekarao, destroying valuables worth millions of naira. It was gathered that the fire was suspected to have emanated from the kitchen, spreading into another part of the building. The incident occurred Sunday evening as it took the effort of the operatives of the state fire service who brought the fire under control. Confirmation, confirming the incident, rather, the Public Relations Officer of the State Fire Service Command, Sami Yusuf Abdullahi, said the incident has destroyed many parts of the house. He said two rooms, two kitchens, two sitting rooms, two stores, a sitting room, a central sitting room, a corridor and toilets have all been destroyed by the fire. The Nigerian Correctional Service has so far recaptured 19 out of the 119 inmates who escaped from Suleja Medium Security Custodial Center in Niger State. On April 24, 2024, the spokesperson for the NCOS Abubakar Umar disclosed this on Sunday. Ten fleeing inmates were rearrested on the morning of Thursday, April 25th, and in the evening, another three were recaptured. And on April 29, three more fleeing inmates were arrested. The relentless downpour on Wednesday night, April 24th, wreaked havoc on the Suleja Custodial Center, resulting in extensive damage to the facility and facilitating the escape of 119 inmates. In Bauchi State, residents expressed dissatisfaction with the Nigerian government's lack of responsiveness in addressing the challenges faced by ordinary citizens. The site's scarce resources and the high cost of premium motor spirits, which exacerbates various issues within the community. This sentiment reflects broader concerns about the nation's current state, particularly in light of recent prices hike in petroleum products by independent marketers. Trust TV's Adamo Imam reports. Residents of Bochi interviewed by Trust TV describe premium motor spirit as indispensable to many Nigerians. Ahmed Ibrahim and Mohammed Aliu, both family men with five and seven children respectively, employed in the state capital, lament their inability to afford the upkeep of their motorcycles due to the recent price hike. Because what I earn is not sufficient to buy fuel and feed my family simultaneously, I have opted to leave the motorcycle at home and walk several kilometers to work. Even if I have some extra money due to the fuel scarcity, I will endure the journey on food to ensure we can afford food. We should be able to purchase fuel despite the price hike, but it's becoming increasingly difficult with our limited funds leading to struggles at the filling stations. If our government were responsible, they would address this situation. We feel cornered now. They should take the necessary action. A motorcycle mechanic and a household representative share their perspective on the enduring challenges stemming from both official filling station and black market sellers of PMS. They emphasize that despite the price hikes, Nigerians continue to feel the impact of scarcity. I managed to buy fuel half a liter from the black market at 700 naira. But fuel is not readily available. Only a few stations have it, with queues up to 300 customers waiting to purchase. I can't wait any longer with what little I have. I must do something to provide food for my family. May God help us. Our leaders need to act swiftly.
Due to this fuel crisis, prices have skyrocketed in the market. Everything, including basic commodities, is now three times more expensive. The price of PMS varies across filling stations, with one liter now cost 1,500 naira. We need the government to address this issue urgently because the Nigerian people are unhappy. Residents also lament the behavior of independent petroleum marketers accusing some filling stations of holding the commodity to the detriment of the masses. They express frustration over the government's perceived inability to address the issue effectively. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NEMET, has predicted sunshine and haziness from Monday to Wednesday across the country. NEMET's weather outlook released on Sunday in Abuja forecast sunny and hazy conditions on Monday over parts of Yobe, Chigawa, Kano and Ketsin estates throughout the forecast period with changes of morning. Thunderstorms over parts of Taraba State, the agency envisaged cloudy skies with intervals of sunshine over the inland states of the south and the coast. NEMET predicted localized thunderstorms over parts of Imo, Abia, Ondo, Oshu, Ekiti, Oyo, Rivas, Edo, Cross River, Akwaibom, Lagos, Bayelsa, Rivers and Delta States later in the day. This is news updates coming to you from Trust TV coming up. Joss Community accuses state government of demolition without prior notice. More news when we return to stay. Hey, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is news updates coming to you from Trust TV. Now let's take a quick look at our headlines again. Federal government insists on electricity tariff hike as labor threatens shutdown. Telco's fear shutdown as construction of Lagos Calabar Highway threatens cable. Now moving on to Edo State, where the state government has given a seven-day ultimatum to illegal miners operating in the Ebutua com on an autonomous community in Ososo, Akoko Edo local government area of the state, to vacate the site. The government said after seven days, any illegal miner found in the area would face the wrath of the law. The State Commissioner for Mining and Energy, Enaholo Ojofo, who led a team of security personnel to meet with chiefs and elders of the community on Saturday, finally gave the ultimatum to the miners on behalf of Governor Obaseki. He said that the state government is interested in the growth and development of the locality, noting that it had zero tolerance for crime and illegalities in the state. Reports said that about a thousand workers, mostly from the northern part of the country, were working on the site to the shock of the locals. The mining site, it was guided, had been in operation for over 25 years and was located inside the Odo Bush, about 15 kilometers from Ososo town. Residents of British American Junction in Joss North local government area of Plateau State are accusing the Plateau State government of demolishing their houses without any justifiable reason or prior notice. According to the community, the action has caused them to suffer avoidable losses to the tune of several millions of naira, while some have lost their sources of livelihoods. Ado Musa completes the story. According to the affected resident of the community, the demolition was a deliberate attempt to force them out of the area. They explained that the plot of the land on which they were building were duly purchased from a former chairman of Langtan North local government area, Mr. Alfred Gono, adding that they were provided with all the necessary documentation after acquiring the land. They emphasized that both the Just Metropolitan Development Board, JMDB, and the State Ministry of Land and Survey had acknowledged the purchase of the plots, pointing out that it was the same Ministry of Lands and Survey that issued a site plan before they began building in the area. JNDB, Suzu Sinshugu and Nongurung, Batarada, Munzona, the Sukosini Mimuba. Officials of the Just Metropolitan Development Board, JMDB, just arrived the area without giving us any prior notice. The board did not inquire how and when we got the plot of the land. They just started demolishing our houses. If they are claiming we are building on the waterways, then I urge you to go and see it yourself. 
What about houses that were built far from the waterway? They were also demolished. I've never seen this kind of The person that sold this land to us is alive. It was legally acquired. We have all our papers which we are certified by the Just Metropolitan Development Board, Ministry of Land and Survey, and even traditional rulers of the community as far back as 2021. What is our offense? We don't even understand why the houses were demolished. The Just Development Board has not done well to demolish our houses. Any demolition is always carried out with following an order of a court of competent jurisdiction and a notice to that effect. The day they came was the same day they demolished the houses. Go and see the distance between the waterway and the building. What have we done to deserve this? Responding to the allegations, the general manager, Just Metropolitan Development Board, had Bankard said, the buildings were erected on the waterway. Building is being done is simply to be able to inspect, direct, and guide you on whether it is supposed to be existent there or not. And we always emphasize that they are condonable and non condonable buildings. And you know, when people remain recalcitrant, the major thing they want to do is to go ahead and their government. Now, today we have come not just to make a statement, we are not doing this as a show off. We are telling anybody who is building on waterways, even before the executive order number three came out, the governor was magnanimous enough to have given them three months' grace for everybody to regularize his paper so that for those who are condonable they pay and get their approvals for those that are not condonable they will have to start taking them off but i think this is going to be a strong message to them to know that we're not joking about it so anybody who does not have an approval and feels he wants to dare government he can go ahead it will be recalled that the state government has recently signed executive order number 003 of 2024 for the control of building and vehicular traffic in the state adomusa trust tv news just Meanwhile, the National Examination Council, NECO, has digitalized the recruitment process for both internal and external examination supervisors and assistant supervisors for the basic education certificate examination and the senior school certificate examination. According to the council, digitization is to check sharp practices in the recruitment process and to enhance efficiency and effective service delivery. A statement made in MENA by the Acting Director of Information and Digital Communication, Assis Sani, added that the process which involved migration from a manual recruitment of supervisors and assistant supervisors to the online system would ensure that supervisors' nomination form, appointment letters and e-photo albums are generated online. Also, routine swapping of supervisors and assistant supervisors during the examination would be done online. Interested qualified teachers with Nigerian certificates in education, degree certificates, master's degrees, PhD, and professors are eligible to apply as supervisors and assistant supervisors. Now on the foreign scene, the United Kingdom, UK, says only international students coming in for their doctor philosophy studies are eligible to bring independence to the country. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, made this known in an interview in Abuja. He said the educational system policy changed earlier this year for international students in higher education not to bring dependents into the UK was to curb the increase of foreign students bringing independence. He explained that a huge surge in dependence was putting an unsustainable pressure on many universities. Still on the foreign scene, Chadians have commenced voting for a president in an election purportedly aimed at ending military rule, but dismissed by opponents of junta leader Mohammad Idris Debi as a fix following violence repression. Voters will choose whether to extend decades of Debi family rule in one of the world's poorest country, a crucial territory in the fight against Judaism across the Sahel region. They have the chance to opt instead of for Debbie's own Prime Minister's success, Massara denounced as a stooge by critics in the absence of any other serious challenges. At his closing election rally on Friday, Debbie promised a knockout in the first round. Massara, on the other hand, also vowed to win without a runoff, telling supporters for the first time, Chad will be yours, Chadians. 
And the world of sports minister John Owen Eno has congratulated Team Nigerian athletes for their impressive performances so far at the World Relays Championship in the Bahamas. The Nigerian athletes secured a qualification for the 400 meters rigs mixed melee relay and the 400 men's relay event of the 2024 Olympics game in Paris. The Nigerian men 400 meters quartet of Dubem Unwachuku, Dubem Amene, Sikiru Adeyemi and Chidi Okeze showcased their powers on the track clocking a remarkable 3 minutes 1 second to secure qualification for the Olympic Games. This achievement marks the fastest time by a Nigerian male team since the bronze-winning team of James Gooday, Musa Aoudou, and Saul Wejopwa, and Enefiok Udo Obong at the Athens 2004 Olympics. Still on sports, Audrey Rubovev won the Madrid Open with a hard 4-4-6-7-5-7-5 victory over Felix Auger Alceme on Sunday to secure his second title of the year, despite battling with illness. The Russian world number no. 8 said he was almost dead every day and could barely sleep this week. After securing a career second Masters 1000 victory, Rublev had lost four consecutive matches before arriving in the Spanish capital, but came down from set down to beat his Canadian opponent. The 26-year-old triumphed at the Hong Kong Open in January, but struggled since before turning around his form in Madrid, dropping just one set on the way to what proved a tense final. But with that, we've come to the end of news updates on Trust TV. Do well to follow us across all social media platforms for more news, programs and documentary. Thanks for watching. I am Lilian Ogazi. Bye for now.